Welcome to the Seppies List. Falconelli is one of few people alleged to have discovered the secret of eternal life through alchemy. He was an author of a series of occult books, and as mentioned before, a well-versed, highly skilled alchemist, possibly even of noble lineage. And to add to this man's mysterious life, his most well-known student, Eugene Cancellet, was quoted as saying this man would never and will never reveal his true identity. Here are a few facts of the sparse and hard to find on Falconelli. Best information on Falconelli appears from his well-documented student, Eugene Cancellet. Cancellet, only 16 when first taught by Falconelli, once said of Falconelli, he's an utterly rich, enormously erudite, and over 400 plus years old. Eugene was also his first student ever. After 15 years with his teacher, Falconelli, in a laboratory of gasworks at the Georgia Company, he apparently turned 100 grams of lead into gold with what Falconelli called his powder of projection, which is a common theme from Saint Germain to many other alchemists. This was done in front of three of his students. Others under his tutelage were the sons of Ferdinand Lespis, also three more, Julian Champagne, Jules Voucher, and Gaston Salvage. Falconelli even communicated with Jacques Bergier to warn the French atomic physicist André Helbronner of man's impending use of nuclear weapons. According to Falconelli, nuclear weapons had been used before, by, and against humanity. The meeting between Falconelli and Bergier occurred during June 1937 in a laboratory of gas board in Paris. It is here Falconelli told Bergier you're on the brink of success as indeed are several other of our scientists today. Please allow me. Be very, very careful. I warn you. The liberation of nuclear power is easier than you think and radioactivity produced from a few grains of metal powerful enough to destroy whole cities. I'm telling you this for a fact. The alchemists have known it for a long time. I shall not attempt to prove to you what I'm going to say, but I ask you to repeat it to Mr. Halbronner. Certain geometric arrangements of highly purified materials are enough to release atomic forces without having recourse to either electricity or vacuum techniques. The secret of alchemy is this. There is a way of manipulating matter and energy so as to produce what modern scientists call a field of force. The field acts on the observer and puts him in a privileged position vis-a-vis -vis the universe. From this position, he has access to realities which are ordinarily hidden from us by time and space, matter and energy. This is what we call the great work. When Bergier asked Falconelli about the Philosopher's Stone, the alchemist answered, The vital thing is not the transmutation of metals, but that of the experimenter himself. It is an ancient secret that a few people rediscover each century. Unfortunately, only a few succeed. The last sighting of Falconelli coincides with when Cancellate last worked with Falconelli, when the alchemist was 80. It would be another 30 years before the two would meet again at a castle in the mountains near Seville, Spain. But said Cancellate, Falconelli looked like a man of 50, although his true age must have been near to 110. In 1981, Cancellet, then aged 80 himself, claimed to have met Falconelli again on several occasions. But he had observed that Falconelli had gradually taken on the appearance of a woman. This, according to the literature of alchemy, is one of the more bizarre side effects of the success in the great work, as the alchemist himself eventually becomes a perfect being, neither male nor female, but androgynous which he called the Divine Androgyny. It is here that Falconelli disappears from history. Will we ever find the truth of this man and his legend?